My project is making the most stable cell phone in a cubic frame applications to contamination detections. While playing with the cell phone from inside a cubicle wireframe, I was amazed and intrigued by the unexpected, unexpected shapes of the cell phone. This motivated me to investigate why the shape looks that way and what is determining the shape and lifetime of the film. And during the investigation, not only was I able to come up with a theoretical explanation and making a good comparison of it with experimental result, it dawned upon me that the very same simple design might be slightly modified to use as a detector of harmful particulate particles. The following are the details of this fun research. These are our objectives. First, what is the shape of the cell film? Second, how can we conveniently measure the curvature of the cell film? Third, what factors affect the shape and lifetime of the cell film? Fourth, how do we understand it theoretically? Fifth, using the setup as a chip detector of harmful particulate matter. At an early stage of the experiment, we found the cell film to be unstable, so we used ice cubes and salt to cool the cell film. But generally, we found that temperature is not a crucial factor affecting the shape. And in order to measure the curvature of the cell film, I used the Lego and a linear light source to create this observational tool. And uh, these are my, this is uh, this is my flow chart. We now move on to what we found about the shape of the cell film and how we observed and analyzed it. Step one, we enlarge our photo and adjust its orientation so that the upper edge of the center square become horizontal. Step two, as the first approximation, all the surfaces connect to the center square can be approximated as the trapezoids. As the photo shows, we can see that the edge of the central square are not exactly straight segments. However, as low as the order approximation, we may treat it as a square. A cell film in the open has the tendency of minimizing its total area. To conveniently calculate this area, we first suppose the edge of the central square are straight segments. Uh, it shows the mathematical model I used to compute the total area. It is consisted of one square, four triangles, and eight trapezoids. Ideally, we expect the cell film to settle down to the X, which minimizes the area. Then, kind of surprise, we found that F of X is very insensitive to change in X. For instance, from this figure one, hardly suspect there to be any minimum because it looks so flat. For X ranging from 0 up to 20% of the side of the wireframe, only when we enlarge the portion near X is a 0.07291 and we tend up to 5 significant digits, they will see a dip in the curve. What this implies is that, experimentally, we won't be able to see the same fixed shapes every time because the many shapes share almost the same minimal energy. Indeed, this was observed early on in our experiment and was quite a puzzle to us. But now, after this simple analysis, we seem to understand better why this should be the case. Once we realize that the square edge should be slightly curved, it is only nature to assert that the other trapezoids we discussed above actually a slightly curved surface too. Therefore, experimentally determining their curvature becomes an even more challenging task. For this task, I have set up an optical lever to magnify its difference from a point. As the photo shows, the reflection of the fluorescent light bulbs becomes a highly curved, which should help determine more accurately the shape of the film. But I am still working on the math of reconstructing the shape from the image of the light source. This table shows the result of our experiment. Uh, if we look closer, we also see that the edge of the center square are not exactly straight segments, but this is understandable because when three surfaces intersect at an edge, the angle between any two must be 120 degrees, and this cannot be strictly satisfied in our current configuration. This then implies that the supposedly straight edge should be slightly curved in theory, 
And this is what makes this investigation even more interesting. A refined approximation changes straight edge to curves. Let epsilon be the area between the curve and the straight segment. Epsilon can be easily computed by integration, but the coefficient of the parabola must be derived from experiment. So, we can get a new function, h of x equal f of s minus 4 epsilon. Uh, the error between h of x and f of s is less than 0.25%, depending on each one of the same experiments. Now, we turn to a different aspect of the solving story. A possible practical use of this experiment. This is my experimental setup. One side is filled with the air, and the other side is filled with the pollutant air. In my experiment, I use incense as a source of a particulate matter 2.5. Now, uh, this shows the lifetime analysis. I put 30 data uh, to fed into SPSS. To do the d-test, the p-value is a 0.006, less than 0.05, achieves significant level. This table, show, this table is one-way ANOVA table. The following are the conclusion. Uh, first, the shape of the sulfone is a system of a, trying to minimize the total surface energy. Second, the surface energy as a function of the size x of the central square has an extremely shallow minimum. Third, um, any, slight, any, any slight test imperfection can significantly change the final stable configuration. Fourth, the presence of the harmful particulate matters in the air does have the significant impact on, on, on lifetime of the sulfone. Fifth, su successfully design a setup as an easy and inexpensive way way of detecting potential harmful particulate in the air. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you.